I think there was like a, a little audio problem, but it should be fixed, I think. Yes, think hopefully. There was like... Just bear with us, folks, while we <laughs> uh, get ready for you. But um, I see some people in the chat are already reaching out. Fabian, or Fabian says, hey, greetings from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Greetings, Fabian. It's cool. We got people from Argentina here in the chat. Um, where we, uh, anyone in the chat, uh, let us know where you're coming, where you're tuning in from. It's nice to see like all the people around the world joining up. Definitely. Ah, uh, Claire is here too. What's up, everybody? Everybody? All right. So let me just test that. Ah, uh, Claire is here too. Quality. All right, so let me just test that. Uh, clear is you too. All right. It's not on land, right? No, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Awesome. So we have other people uh, in the chat telling us, letting us know where they're tuning in from. We have Prasant tuning in from Colorado. Awesome. What city in Colorado are you are you tuning in from Brisson? Boulder or anywhere else? We have Marianne Marianne tuning in from Maryland. Nice, nice. Claire tuning in from New York City. Rahul is tuning in from India. Cool. Aurora. Okay. Awesome. Aurora, Colorado. Chen, where are you joining us from today? Uh, I'm joining from Turkey at the moment. So apologies on that uh, team. Not sure what's going on with our audio here. We're just going to troubleshoot real quick. So Looks apologies like on that an, uh, team. Not sure what's going on with our audio here. We're just going to troubleshoot real quick. She's on that uh, team. Not sure what's going on with our audio here. We're just going to troubleshoot real quick. She's on that uh, team. Not sure what's going on with our audio. Uh, is it on my end? Like, I have my headphones. Uh. All right, so let me just do a little troubleshooting here. I've muted a couple folks, um, so if I don't echo. All right, so let me just do a little troubleshooting here. I've muted a couple <laughs> folks, um, so if I don't echo. All right.
All right, Ruby, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, and you are not echoing. All right, Ruby, can you hear me? Oh, no, never mind, you are echoing. <laughs> yes, I can so, hear you, so bear with us. and you are not echoing. All right, while we wait for Ruby, Chen, can you hear me? Oh, he's muted. Okay, got it. Hello, am I on the phone? Yes, I can hear you now. So Ruby went to go do some mic checks. In the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce myself and our student guests while we're here and uh, tell you guys what, what's on the agenda for today. So hello, everyone. My name is Isaac. I am a student developer advocate uh, for the student programs team here at Postman. And today's stream will be uh, focused on talking about using the Twitter API version two. Um, alongside that, we have a really great agenda today. Uh, I have a special guest from your student community. Um, Chen, please take it away. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be part of the stream. I'm Chetin Khan Tashkinginj. I'm a Postman student leader from Turkey. And I've been really active on the program. I love the student community, student, uh, everyone was really great. So yeah, in this stream, I'm prob mostly going to talk about my uh, project that I developed for the community. And I'm really excited to talk about it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Chen. And uh, we'll definitely give Chen a chance to tell you, share more about his really awesome project and the blog post he wrote um, about the Discord bot he made for our server. Uh, and I know Ruby is doing mic checks right now, but um, she is also my co-host for the stream. Uh, she is right now um, on the technical, she's an architect on the technical enablement team um, and transitioning into student community. We also have Claire, uh, also from the student programs team. Um, Claire's really an uh, awesome person. You'll see her in the chat just uh, helping us out doing magical moderation skills. So everyone, if you can, please say thank you, Claire, while we, uh, and while we wait for Ruby to come back, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and just mention what else is on the agenda. So later today, um, we'll have Chen sharing his project, um, sharing more about himself and just uh, sharing about his blog post and we'll get to hear more about that. And Later on, we will go, uh, Ruby will be demoing and doing a workshop on Twitter API. Um, so I'm not sure, but have any of you signed up or heard about uh, Twitter Chirp yet? You can go ahead and let me know in the chat. Have any of you uh, found out? Oh, thank you, Ruby. So, or Claire, thank you, Claire, for sharing uh, a link to um, student programs at Postman. So please check out those links right there. Um, that's the page to learn more about the program, including how to be become how to become certified as a postman student expert. So, um, and you'll hear more about um, what it's like to be an expert and uh, the perks of that uh, coming from Chen himself. But um, yeah, let me let us know if any of you have signed up yet for Chirp. So, um, Chirp is basically Twitter's uh, is a is an API conference slash well, API uh, hackathon that Twitter is hosting um, later this fall. So, uh, if anyone, any of you have uh, haven't heard about it, um, now is a great time to uh, go ahead and register and enter into the competition. Um, and uh, we'll be sharing more about that in the in the demo that Ruby shares today. But um, Chen, have you heard about uh, Chirp or like? Are you familiar with anything about um, Twitter Twitter API? Um, I think I, it's actually first time hearing, hearing, hearing about like the Chirp event. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it, and I'm actually really interested the way you mentioned it, you know, like how it's like a hackathon organized by Twitter. Uh, I think it should be re it can be really interesting. I'm all all ears on that. Definitely. Yeah, it's uh, and that's uh, that'll be the one of the 
the benefits of coming to uh, watching our stream today is that we'll be teaching you how to use the API. So um, everyone, Chen included, uh, will be able to like follow along. And it looks like we have Ruby back. <laughs> Hello, yeah, sorry Ruby. about that. Uh, so my headset seems to be the one echoing. Uh, so I had to jump off really quick just to make sure that that's going okay. Um, awesome. Just double checking. Am I echoing still? No. No. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore this second voice over here, feeling a little <laughs> insane. Um, but yes, sorry about that. So thank you, Isaac, so much for introducing me on my behalf. But just really quickly, everyone, my name is Ruby. Thanks, Claire, for the support there. Um, I'm a technical enablement architect here at Postman under the solutions engineering team, but I'm collaborating with the student community sorry, student community. Um, and we today will be talking about the Twitter API, but we do have, if you've noticed, um, a dear friend of ours, Chetan, here to talk to us about his Discord bot, which is a really neat tool that he's been, he's built and wrote a Postman blog on. And he's here to talk to us for a couple minutes about how he built that out and what kind of challenges he faced and what kind of problems it solves. So Chetan, if you are willing to share your story, Feel free to dive right into that. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you, Ruby. So the first thing I can talk about is like explain what the bot does and why I developed it. So the main reason I developed the bot was to help the student community and keep the Discord server more secure. Uh, the main problem uh, we had with using Discord as our, <laughs> thank you, Claire. Uh, the main problem with uh, using Discord as our community platform was that uh, Discord was at the time getting targeted by a lot of like phishing attacks. Uh, people were stealing others' accounts and they were using those accounts to send automated phishing links. So they can just like invade servers, invade Discord servers with that. And it was really uh, annoying and was really slow to delete all those messages by hand. I remember I was like uh, at the middle of the night, uh, right, texting to Claire, hey, Claire, the server has, there's a spam in the server, can you delete it? And again, since it was done by hand, it was slow, uh, it was harder to detect for the, we needed to detect it uh, as soon as possible because if even if two people clicked on the link, uh, they would multiply. And for that reason, I developed a simple Discord bot uh, that used to detect uh, the word Nitro since the scammers were using uh, Nitro, Discord Nitro as phishing tactic. Uh, this was one of, like my first in first version of the bot. It was uh, pre pretty simple, just a fast solution. And uh, yeah, it, it worked pretty well. Uh, it has some had some false positives, but it worked really well. And after that, we, as the community, that's where like the Postman community came in. Uh, since it, I made it as an open source project, I sent the link to everyone and everyone could. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. So Claire actually helped me a lot uh, in the project. I'll get to that. Um, again, since I made it open source, I want to, everyone to participate if they want it. Uh, and Claire really helped me implement a better detection algorithm. Uh, we basically just detect a false Discord link since the scammers send links, links like Discord -y or Discord, like a malfunction Discord link and the algorithm the Claire helped develop uh, automatically detects it and deletes it. And again, so yeah, it currently has, let me just double check, I think 760 uh, phishing attacks blocked. So it saved a lot of time and it became one of my largest projects. And it's a great way for students to like move out for tutorial help. I think tutorial hell is something that students uh, struggle to get out of. And just developing a project 
without any without looking any like tutorials developing it for a community just by yourself i think is uh makes you learn a lot of volleyball volleyball, volleyball skills and makes you go out of tutorial help i learned a ton while developing that discord bot awesome yeah, i can also show a data sheet uh, definitely yeah please if you're interested let me just try to share it i know some um i know some some people in the chat might have some questions about your project too chen so i'll let you share your share your data and, and any anything you have to share and then towards the end i can uh like right after that i can ask you some clarifying questions but please continue yeah yeah sure okay so uh is it visible at the moment yes i can see uh so this was uh this is a bar chart that i get from my database uh i keep the messages i keep the scamming messages in the database after it gets deleted to see what the scammers were using most is what the scammers were like using it as a tactic uh as you can see it has a lot of uh phishing mails uh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah as you can see and the as you can see they mention like at everyone we close we close the functionality to mention at everyone in the server uh this is because they want to like get people infected really fast since an uh, admin will probably delete it in the server and yeah uh this is a fancy visual if you're interested in like discord development maybe you can uh, get inspired by this you can develop your own discord bots to secure your friend's server or help them it's it's really fun to like develop something for someone to use uh that was my main motivating factor since uh, there were like a lot of <laughs> a free night roam because your entire account yeah <laughs> uh since like i i can i could see the effect of the bot in the server i could see how people were grateful uh because it worked correctly it was really motivating me me and i worked on it because i was really motivated i also had some fun comments like uh the meme comment it fetches and like programming meme when you type in i it's the probably the, one of the most used comments in the server as well and yeah it's a it was great it was great it's a great open source journey for me yeah yeah <laughs> uh we went on hard like the it detects if you type nitro you you the message gets instantly deleted because it was really hard to like fight with those with the scammers we had to put some hard measures uh but the server is usually most of the time a 99 percent of the time uh pretty so, clean at the moment chen something i'm wondering how long did it take for you to build the bot okay uh so i actually had like prior discord bot development experience i developed one for my friend's server again since it was since i saw how like my friends were using my discord bot uh it motivated me and i developed a bot uh, so i i had prior experience and because of that it was pretty easy to develop and as i've mentioned the first utility of the Discord bot was to, to just like detect the word nitro and delete it so i developed it probably in like three to four days but uh, it evolved into something much more and that probably uh, took like two three months probably i still he tried to like me update it uh, add new commands i recently added a new fun, like a fun command that fetches you a cute animal picture if you write pets uh so yeah yeah um it's still active but the uh point it has gotten to has probably been like two to three months with the help of claire yeah sure claire is always a huge help i did see a question come up here from devrel kev um i'm still getting a little bit of an echo so i'm not sure if you answered this one just yet but do you get other variations of the word nitro 
Uh, yeah, it detects like if you type it, uh, it, it just translates it into translates it into lowercase and looks if it's equal to nitro. Um, but the, again, it's the old version. It still has that nitro word detection, but the main detection at the moment is like a false Discord uh, link detection. Can you see my mouse in the screen? Um, yes. Okay, so uh, link like this, probably. Like the, you can see it's like disord.b. So this is like a scamming, like a phishing link. But at first, when people see it, they thought it's like, ah, it's Discord link. And I, they click it, and it routes them to a cloned Discord login site. And when they log in with their credentials, their credentials get stolen, and they get rerouted into the official Discord website. So they think like, oh, an error occurred. Let, occurred. Let me just log in again. And they don't notice, but they their accounts are stolen. So our main feature is like it uses a uh, the, I think it was the Limstein, Limstein's distance algorithm to uh, look at the link and see how it's uh, like how it's comparable to the word Discord and if it's uh, really similar to Discord, it gets it gets deleted. Awesome. Um, and can you share a little bit more about the technologies you used, Chen? Just. Um, a little bit about maybe what tools do you mainly build? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me just close it. OK, so I'm a JavaScript developer, so I love JavaScript. So I use Node.js with this project and uh, the Discord library, Discord.js. Uh, but I specifically wanted to like learn something new, develop my skills. So I wanted to develop this bot using only TypeScript. Since I know like TypeScript is really popular and most companies are trying to adopt into TypeScript from JavaScript. And I want I built it in TypeScript because of that. And it's it, the whole tech stack is basically that. I host the bot in Azure cloud environment. And yeah, uh, use some couple of uh, libraries for some utilities. It's mostly just TypeScript and Node.js stuff. Very cool. And you mentioned that you learned a lot from this project. So if you could share, like, what's the um, biggest thing you learned from this project? It could be technology or just more about, um, like, overcoming challenges, working on Discord bots like this. OK, so the main thing I learned with we're learning is uh, again TypeScript. I learned a lot of, about TypeScript. I learned a lot about cloud hosting, uh, and I learned a lot about like actually developing an active, ongoing project. Since the project was like used by the server, and it was like it was really important for the server security. And if it had like a problem of like deleting uh, messages. There are not phishing links. It can it could like cause problems. So uh, I had to work with all other branches, like to develop a testing bot, uh, just to like test it before I push into production, just like a normal company would. And I learned uh, how, how to do hot fixes because I had problems. It was uh, it wasn't like a perfect development cycle. It, like every developer, we I had like a bug or something. And I would just get a message, oh, chat, chat, and there is a bug in the bot. It's deleting uh, messages. I would just go and go on the cloud environment. I would just do a hot fix really quickly, and it would be fixed. So yeah, I actually learned a lot about like real world software development, if I were to say. I learned a lot about Docker as well, since uh, it's in a Docker container. A lot of cool new technologies. Oh, we have a great question um, from Marianne. So Marianne asked, what's the difference between JavaScript? Oh, thank you, Ruby. So there's the question. What's the difference between JavaScript and TypeScript? Was TypeScript easier or harder to use? Um, so 
TypeScript is not like it's it's just like JavaScript actually. Uh, you know, JavaScript does not have types, uh, just in like other programming languages. For example, in Java or C, you when you declare a variable, for example, you type integer. If you declare a function, you type like it it will return integer. It will return nothing as void or etc. Uh, TypeScript basically helps you add types to JavaScript, so it it forces you to uh, write better code for your applications. And since JavaScript has like the weird, uh, if you if you use JavaScript, you know JavaScript has weird attributes like returning undefined. You, you can declare functions with, uh, for example, we can declare a function that takes three parameters, but you can send two or five parameters to the function and JavaScript will just say, okay, no problem. <laughs> And uh, TypeScript basically, if you do that in TypeScript, type, TypeScript compiler basically t gives an error. Uh, so it forces you to write better code. And if you're using uh, JavaScript in a large application, it uh, really helps you save development time and detect bugs much easier. So what would you say are the best use cases for TypeScript versus JavaScript? Uh, I think TypeScript should be used uh every, whenever it's possible <laughs> uh because it it's really it's really powerful it really helps developers and i think it's again it should be used as most as possible i think it's like the new javascript you said it's like vanilla javascript no 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 the like the, successor, the, to, okay. the successor to javascript <laughs> Nice. Um, I don't have too much experience using TypeScript other than reading it here and there. Um, was this Discord bot project the only time you've used TypeScript? I imagine since you're such a fan of it, you've probably used it multiple times. What were some other examples? Um, I I like learned TypeScript, but this was the first time probably. Yeah, it was probably the first time I actually used it on a project that I do not follow it with a tutorial, like a project that I just develop by myself and an idea comes and I do not follow any tutorials or something like that and develop something. This was the first time that me using TypeScript. Uh, I'm such a fan of TypeScript because it, I had really had problems with uh, JavaScript's return time, return types when I used to like develop project, it would be like, when I use the login screen, like hello undefined or something like that, and I wouldn't know where, why the undefined returned, or where is the error, and I because JavaScript doesn't tell me, I would just need to like search the code, look at look it up for this minor mistake, and fix it up. And uh, TypeScript helps me like detect the, those errors and help me quickly. Uh, could be solved. I, it actually forces you, since it forces you to write better code, it doesn't uh, face make you face with those errors. For sure. Uh, I see Devrel Kev's comment here when JavaScript gives you uh, this string of one instead of one. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, lots of little nuances there. Um, but speaking of debugging, I know our Postman application has a lot of like inspecting into uh, responses that you can do with our JavaScript. Um, so I'm actually eager to kind of get our feet wet exploring this Twitter API. I know a lot of folks are excited to see what that looks like. Uh, we hinted that we were going to peek into that, so we can kind of dive right into that. Did you, Isaac, want to touch on anything before we move into that? Um, I think that's it. Thank you for answering all my questions. And I think um, thank you for answering the questions from the chat as well. Uh, Everyone, please just uh, uh, give a round of applause for Chen for that awesome um, project showcase. And uh, and if anyone else has projects or blog posts that they'd like to share uh, on stream, uh, we do these highlights to uh, to promote to hopefully bring students like like Chen um, to just share something cool you're working on or how you used uh, Postman in your projects as well. Um, with that said, I think that's all. Um, uh, yeah. So Chen, you're welcome to explore this API with us. I think more thoughts and opinions on what we're exploring are welcomed. 
Um, but yes, I see claps for Marianne. Really cool project, and I'm sure lots of folks were excited to learn and hear about it. Um, so yeah, let me yeah, actually... thank you. Go so ahead. can I add something like two minutes? Yeah. Uh, I just just like to like give say my appreciation for Postman since I'm um, a member of many different student communities. Uh, but Postman student community like uh, allows me to uh, sp spread my work. Uh, it supports me uh, better than most of the student communities or student programs. So if you're interested in joining a great student community, I suggest just check it, check the program. You don't need to, need to be a, like a student leader. Uh, you can be a student expert. If you want to promote API literacy in your campus, you can become a leader. But I recommend you to just join up the Discord server and meet up with great-minded students. For sure. Thank you so much, Chetan, for, for sharing that. And so authentically, too, I know we go on and on and on about how much we love the student community and the program, but it's great to hear from folks who are actually in it, how they've been impacted and what it means to them. Um, so super valuable insight. Thank you so much, Chetan. Yeah, uh, but with, with that, let me jump onto my screen here. Um, I did a quick, so I know what Twitter is, and I'm sure you all know what Twitter is, or most folks know, but for those who don't um, or are just, you know, being exposed to it for the first time, um, the way I describe it is a space for folks to just kind of check in with each other and send quick blurbs about what they're thinking or feeling or their opinions on any matter um, that's going on in the world. Uh, but I did want to look up a more semi-official I guess, definition of what Twitter is. And I found this HubSpot blog on what is Twitter. But I did want to highlight that it started as an SMS based platform. Um, so one thing I know about Twitter is uh, that I have a limit of the characters I can use in each of my tweets. I always wondered what that was. I figured that was just kind of like a Twitter brand thing, which I guess it turned out to be. But it started out uh, being SMS based. So it makes sense that that was a limitation starting out and they just kind of stuck to it and it became part of their thing. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that Twitter is really cool um, for folks to stay connected. Ruby, and... can, you, can you, sorry, can you yeah, make the window um, bigger? Yeah. It really... might be a little hard to read, that's all. For sure. Awesome. Let me get this ad out of the way. That's perfect. Thank you, Ruby. Um, but yeah, this was on the HubSpot blog. So if anyone's curious about that, um, I'm sure Twitter also has their own resources. But what we wanted to explore was the Twitter API. And there was uh, a recent announcement about Twitter API v2, which we were very curious about in the student community. We've been thinking about different projects that we want to build using this Twitter API. But before we do any of that, we want to make sure that we understand it. So to understand anything with that developer mindset, I know I have to look for the docs. Where's the documentation? Um, so I can Google Twitter API. v2 documentation um, but it's going to lead me to more or less the same link developer.twitter.com which i already have open here so i'll just exit out of here um, and the first thing that you'll see when you get to their docs is this humongous banner about the chirp developer challenge um, the chirp i think i believe it's a conference please correct me if i'm wrong but it's a huge event that twitter puts on um, and they're asking folks to submit their projects that they've built with the Twitter API v2. Word on the street is that winners are going to win, or the grand prize actually is a huge cash prize of, I believe, $10,000. So Ooh. yeah, keep your ears peeled um, for you know what we do next with this Twitter API and what we learn about it, because you might want to use it in your project and submit it for this challenge. That's a lot of API tokens. <laughs> for sure. Um, so just scrolling down here, looks like they're going over a couple of use cases for the Twitter API. You can use it to build for your business. You can build the public, integrate it to improve an experience on a platform, research, use it for good, for fun, teaching and learning. Scrolling down a bit more, looks like there is a code snippet, a curl command here, uh, that you can use to access the Twitter API neat stuff looks like they make it very easy for you to just get started and get going 
So let me just do that. I'll scroll up here. I'm actually already signed in. Maybe hmm, we'll go here. Build for fun. Let's see what folks are doing for fun with the Twitter API. Ooh, look at that. You can make a bot with the Twitter API. Create art. Automate your Twitter account. And right here, it looks like you can get started with essential access or go right to the docs. I kind of want to get started already. And what you'll find here <laughs> is that I've already played around with the Twitter API myself. Um, I created a couple of just pretend applications for my own learning. I called this one practice app for a new account. Um, and this one is called a staging app for the student community. Um, what the developer portal here in Twitter, what they want you to do is create a project so that you get an API key for that project. Um, and that way they can kind of track uh, the calls that you're making through for your project. Um, they also have examples here over on the side with sample apps, which I thought was pretty neat, just to kind of get an idea of what other folks are doing with the Twitter API. And it takes you right over to Glitch. Looks like there's a Twitter hide replies annotations project. Wonder if that'll load up in time. I love this feature of Glitch where you're just kind of waiting around and doing this stuff. Uh, sign in with Twitter. While Ruby is uh, uh, looking through that part, I asked the chat a question. Um, what's one feature you would add to Twitter using Postman and Twitter API if you could get that feature approved, like no problem? Um, one thing I would add to Twitter is definitely I would add an edit button for my tweets. <laughs> I think that's the number one thing that a lot of people have asked for for a long time, and Twitter for some reason just doesn't have one. Yeah, I I feel like that that must be intentional, right? I feel like that's a somewhat of a controversy for folks using Twitter. <laughs> um, but I've definitely been there where I've made one typo and I'm like, no, now the internet knows I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, at, right? You get spared grammatical corrections. But um, while while Ruby's uh, looking through the uh, Twitter API page, please let us know like what's one feature you guys would add. Oh, we have a suggestion here, Kevin said he would want i want a random tweet that analyzes all past content and comes up with something that sounds like me That's you cool. know what i think there might be maybe an endpoint that could achieve something similar uh to that i was just reading up on that so i'm curious if there is Let's actually go back to docs, look at their documentation and kind of see what endpoints they have here. Actually, let me pause right there because I do know, <laughs> working at Postman, that we have the Twitter API available to us in Postman. Um, so I'm just gonna navigate over there. I think it's here. And I have my web browser uh, agent for Postman open up here. Um, opened up here. If you have your desktop version, you can have that open as well if you're choosing to follow along with me. If not, totally fine, you can watch along. Um, but what I'll do here in my browser is I'm just going to search for the Twitter API and immediately I get a public workspace which looks like it was created by Twitter, seems official. I'll go in there Awesome. and we have a couple collections here. Looks like the Twitter API v2 is already highlighted. And I see folks jumping in here. Super cool. Love that folks are joining us. But right over on the right side, if this didn't already pop up for you, you can always select the documentation icon and check out the documentation for the Twitter API v2. Now, this is public and available for folks to play around with. Um, however, since this is in the public workspace and we don't own this public workspace, there's a padlock on the collection. That just means that you'll have to fork that into your own workspace. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to add it to, I'll just call it Ruby's live fork. The fork lives. 
Um, and I will add it to... Actually, I think I might already have it here. Let me just double check. Yeah, so I already created this fork um, and I have it living over here. If you created a fork, um, Postman would just kind of automatically transport you to where you created the fork. Um, in my case, I already had it in this workspace and I just remembered that I did. Um, but here you'll want to, again, revisit those docs. They'll always be available to you in the collection. Um, check those out. You can see what you'll need to get from the Twitter developer portal. Looks like it'll be a consumer key, which would be your API key, your consumer secret or your API secret, an access token, a token secret, and a bearer token. Something you'll notice that I did here in my collection for the Twitter API v2, my forked collection, um, in the authorization tab, I added bearer token here. Oops. And that is actually <laughs> referring to a variable that I have set um, in my variables tab here. I won't open that up because it'll reveal all my secrets. But um, that's essentially it. That's all you need to do to start playing around with the Twitter API. Hopefully all my stuff is still saved there so I can just start messing with this. But uh, Isaac, did you have any, or Chetan, did you have any questions before we start? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I'm interested in like all these like cool parts and like folders, components in this workspace, um, like the search tweets. I'm curious just to know like what kind of stuff do they, does Twitter have like set up in search tweets, like that function or that feature? Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh... I'm glad you asked that question because I just remembered why I went on this gigantic tangent looking for um, <laughs> the Twitter API in Postman. And it was because of Kevin's question um, about the endpoint. So let me actually go back in. What did Kevin suggest here? Oh, so Kevin, uh, we're back at Kevin's comment about, yep. A random tweet option that analyzes all my past content and comes up with something that sounds like me. Um, that might involve a bot as well. I feel like Chetan's gears are turning sounds like, on that one. Sounds like Kevin wants to build AI. <laughs> um, but let's see if there's any endpoints that might help us do something like that. So you can do a tweet lookup. You can search tweets. So you might want to search your own tweets, right? To see and look for patterns, maybe to train um, an AI system. You can search tweet counts, well, recent tweet counts. Let me actually just do a recent search here. I happen to already be querying for football. Hopefully my- can even search oh, for be spaces, cool. right? You said we can search for spaces now, Chetan? I mean, there is an ability to search for spaces as well, right? Yeah. So I think Twitter like, might add a better to search for spaces. I don't see like many spaces at the moment. I think an awesome idea, Ruby, um, for a feature for Twitter based off of like the, I just got an idea when you saw football as one of the search queries <clears throat> would be um, a Twitter search feature where anytime you search for football, you get like um, a collection of your favorite football teams. So if we're talking American football, then I could see like Jets or Giants and like their recent wins or their upcoming games when I just search for football. That way Twitter tells me like, okay, you have these games coming up. So like a schedule, a game schedule type feature would be great for fans like me who just want to know when their team's playing or European football. Like if you wanted to know Real Madrid's next game or Barcelona, that's like a great way to like search football and then get like a, somehow like a, the return results would be your favorite team schedule so you never miss it for sure so that sounds like maybe you'd be chaining requests to potentially like another api starting with twitter's api searching your recent tweets for like which football team you mentioned the most often and then maybe going into another api that searches for games or events in your local area um so that's definitely something cool that we can try out maybe on another stream um but that would involve using the test tab here um, and potentially, depending on how we structure it, maybe a pre-request script as well. That's cool. So 
hopefully my credentials are still in there. Um, I will search recent tweets for football and see what happens there. Nice. Looks like there's a couple of recent tweets here. And we get some metadata information as well. Here's a retweet about football. Thursday, let's go. Okay, cool. <laughs> see? Uh, at SN for Envy. So it sounds like that's about an upcoming game or like a current game at that time. Hmm. Nice. Uh, cool. So looks like there's a lot to see and learn here about the Twitter API. Let me see what else is available in their docs here. Um, there's a getting started guide. How the platform's organized. They even have a Twitter ads API. Ads are huge for apps like Twitter, social media, apps in general. Um, like almost the, the whole ad space uh, is great, is a great place to, if you guys have ideas um, for something, for an API or like a, a web app um, that's focused on something in advertisements, that would be very big. So that's something that, um, in my opinion, that would impress judges at, um, at Chirp. That's a great call out there. Um, so I know that I'm brainstorming different projects that we can work on using the Twitter API. And I might even submit something to that uh, Chirp competition. Uh -oh. I don't know about you, Isaac. Watch out for Ruby. I mean, <laughs> all right, I, if I, I know if Ruby's going in, I don't want the smoke. I have to like watch out for creatives like her. But, um, but if anyone wants to build out the next uh, NFL or FIFA Twitter feature or Twitter app, um, let me know, because I definitely want to know when my teams are playing. I can sure. try to build something for the chip as well. It's probably going to be a bot, since like everything I do is bots at this time. Awesome. That's amazing. That would be, that would be a sight to see, Chetan. Yeah, I love the name, by the way, the chirp name for the conference, since like Twitter has a bird icon. <laughs> for sure. It keeps with the theme. I love Twitter. Uh, I like Claire's point, uh, her comment, just say, see, it, it's possible with bookmarks as well. And I think I saw another student um, make a, a point about tw a Twitter API there. I saw you highlighted it. Yeah. Uh, Twitter API means go for GraphQL. I feel like that's a little cryptic. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not getting the, I'm not getting the, the metaphor test service 341. But yeah, so... Isaac and Chetan, how do you feel about the Twitter API discussion and Chetan's Discord bot discussion? Do you feel like folks are ready, maybe, for a Kahoot game about what we've discussed today? Um, I don't know. I, I have to check the. I have to personally gauge the chat. Um, let us know, everyone. Are you, are you all ready for a Kahoot game? Um, to wrap up, uh, before we wrap up this this stream, who wants to play Kahoot? Chen, do you want to play Kahoot? Uh, I would love to, but I'm not allowed to play right. Kahoot. Oh yes, we decided right, right. we decided Chen cannot play this Kahoot game in particular. Not because we don't want a Chen to play; we really do want Chen to play. But part of the questioning has to do with his Discord bot, so it wouldn't be fair. And I but so some You have to come back. You have to come back next time, Chen, in order to play. Aww. Cool. So if you are in our audience right now on Twitch or YouTube in the chat here, um, and if you've never used Kahoot before, it's basically a quiz game. Um, and what you'll do is log into Kahoot.it on your phone or in another tab in your browser here. Um, and you'll see a, an option to enter a code. You'll see that code kind of flash across your screen here. You'll want to enter that code so you can enter our game. Um, but the aim of the game here is getting, you have to get the correct answer, of course, but you also need to get the correct answer the fastest so that you can get the highest score. The highest score at the end of the game enters a leaderboard, um, and then you'll earn bragging rights as the first winners of our first Kahoot game on our student community stream. So, Isaac, did I miss anything there? No, you got it. Um, that's pretty much, uh, that's what we're setting up here. And... I'm ready for that. I'm already on my Kahoot page. I'm ready for that game pin when you are, Ruby. For sure. Make sure that you are on Kahoot.it on your phone or in another tab in your browser. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start this and see what our game pin is. Oh, there it is. You can also, if you have a QR code scanner, like a camera on your phone, you can use that as well. Chad, you're, you're more than welcome to follow along, even though like we're not, we don't have you in the, in the leaderboard, but definitely, um, definitely feel free to just like chime in okay. silently on what you think I the answer is. I don't have an answer is. for that. Is there some? Oh, there's oh, no answer Siri. for that. We are not allowed <laughs> to enjoy the I game. Did, I did not just try to use Siri to like win Kahoot. That was not. <laughs> nice. Um, so as soon as we see folks uh, logging into the game, we'll see their names popping up here. Then we can start the game. Cool. Give you all a couple of seconds so your names pop up here. Snowy Swan. Sturdy Llama, Friendly Horse. Okay, we have a couple folks. Give it a few more seconds. Looks like we have about five seconds. I'm the Sturdy <laughs> Llama, just so you know who's who. What? It's supposed to be a secret. Oh, are we keeping it a secret? Well, I guess we can't now. <laughs> okay, well, well, we know who Sturdy Llama is. <laughs> cool, so we're going to test our knowledge. Let's see what you know about the Postman Student Programs and today's stream. So this is just like a headline. It's not a question just yet. By the way, uh, the chat is asking for the link to the game. Oh, um, yeah, let's try this. Uh, Ruby, let's try this again. Let's, uh, can we host it from the beginning so the others can join? Um, OK, yeah. It'll be, a, just, new it'll be a new game code. So okay. let me. I'll type the game code in the chat so everyone can see it. Start a new one here. Make sure you are in Kahoot.it, and here's the new game code. Okay, I sent out that game code. All right, let's see. We got Classy Emu. Bright Elk, Royal Leopard. Is it always like an animal, an adjective in an animal? Um, it that's it looks like that's the theme here. We have Doctor Quail. Doctor Quail. Doctor Quail. He got he's, his medical degree from Quail School. He's uh, definitely not a quack. He's definitely. <laughs> All right. So we'll see the headline pop up again, and then the first question. So let's see what you know about the Postman Student Programs and today's stream. You have five seconds until the first question comes up. Which URL points to Twitter's API documentation? Is it docs.twitter.com, developer.twitter.com, developer.twitter.tweet, or dev.twitter.tweet? Tricky one. No one reveal the answer just yet. I feel like you have enough seconds to like go into another tab and figure it out too though. <laughs> so the answer was developer.twitter.com. We got three folks with the correct answer. Dr. Quail with 942 Whoa. points. Dr. Quail is, is, is already, he's in it to win it. How many Postman student experts are there around the world? 18,762, 15, 3,235, or the limit does not exist. That last one doesn't seem like a bad answer either, you know? This guy yeah, I would, I would definitely go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so the correct answer was 3,235. Nice. Oh, just one person with that answer. Although that was a great quote from Mean Girls. Had to throw that one in there. On which continent are there no student experts yet? Africa, Europe, South America, or Antarctica? This seems like <clears throat> this, there's a there's a safe answer here. <laughs> but it's you, also, you never know. might also not be the answer. 
<laughs> I would That's be like... really surprised if it wasn't the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Antarctica. Okay, so nobody has some... anything else. <laughs> Do we have some penguin students? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say we were going to say we have penguin API experts. Dr. Quail looks like they're unbeatable. Dr. Quill met the penguin student leaders in Antarctica. What did Chetan's Discord bot aim to do? Was it prevent phishing attacks and account theft? Was it prevent typos in public channels? Was it prevent non 2F8 accounts from joining Discord? Or was it offer fun facts about Ruby and Isaac? It was definitely fun facts about Ruby and Isaac. I can add, add a comment. I can add a comment. <laughs> 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 yeah, Jen, if you're if you want to make fun facts about us as a bot in Discord, you know, we can we can talk <laughs> about that as a chirp developer conference submission idea. Nice. Yeah, so that be fun. looks like Dr. Quail got the grand prize here. Uh nice job, Dr. Quail, whoever you were. Awesome. Round of applause for that folk for that person. Good job. Nice. All right, so I can come out of here and whoop, that fun little background sound for Kahoot just always gets me. Um, but yeah, this is a lot of fun. Uh, let's, you know, wrap up with a couple of shout outs for teammates, for Discord community members, student community members who went above and beyond recently. This week, I really want to highlight and shout out Kushal and Mejnur. Uh, for being available and helpful to others on Discord who had questions. We love, love, love when folks in our Discord community and our student community help each other out and get each other unstuck, especially as they're learning something brand new. Um, that's always really valuable and we really honor that and love that you're doing that. Please continue doing that. Um, and if you're not in our Discord community just yet, I'll flash that across the screen again. Um, please make sure you join us. We have a really strong, really helpful community that's always trying to help each other out, um, and especially in this like learning capacity. Isaac and Chetan, did you wanna close this out with any thoughts or um, ideas or anything else that you wanna share? Any highlights or shout outs for anybody? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would just love to say thank you again to Chetan for joining us and sharing his really awesome Discord bot project and letting us know, uh, just telling us about himself and sharing a little bit of his journey and also just saying reasons why he appreciates being a part of the postman student community. And I would like to highlight as an, that as another reason just uh, for why you should join our community, join our discord um, and really get, uh, get a feeling of just the motivation and inspiration of uh, building with postman or creating with postman as well. Um, and uh, just hearing, from students like Chetan. We'd, we'd love to hear from you and see what kind of creative things you're all working on. I'm sure everyone has like really great ideas like what we saw in the chat today um, and questions too. Just really, really awesome questions from everyone. Um, thank you to Claire also for chat moderation. I uh, really appreciate that, Claire. And thank you to all the students that came and attended. Um, and yeah, just this is, this is very fun. And we'll be doing these streams more often. Um, playing Kahoot games at the end like this, having uh, workshops around Twitter API version two. So I believe for the next one, we're, we're gonna be continuing um, doing like a part two on Twitter API uh, version two, right Ruby? Yeah, um, but before we start talking about what we'll do on our next stream, Chetan, did you wanna share oh, any right, highlights yeah. or thoughts too? Uh, yeah, sure. It, I would like to thank you all for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to like talk about uh, the awesome community of Postman, talk about my project and etc. Uh, also, a, it was a great, uh, like, uh, it was great to see the power of Twitter API. Uh, got me really interesting, inter interested. And maybe I could do, develop something using that API. So it was really an awesome session. I learned a lot. And again, uh, thanks. You thank you, the player, for doing also multitasking on two different platforms. For At sure, once. she's she's our guardian angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, uh, thank you all for uh, have, like thank you for all for being here, and thank you to Postman for allowing me 
to uh, talk about my projects. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, just one more closing thought on my end. Um, if you are interested in joining as a student expert at Postman, there is a really short application that you go through. If you apply, um, you can add Twitch stream, all caps, as a code, um, or YT stream, meaning YouTube stream, if you're joining from YouTube as the code for your application as well. That just helps us know where you're coming from when you apply. Um, you're more than welcome to you know, check out our programs and go through the student expert training uh, and do cool stuff that like Chetan is doing here with us today. Um, again, I wanted to highlight that we love sharing other folks' projects. Uh, so if you're in our Discord community and you're working on a really cool project, please reach out to us as well so you can be spotlighted on our next stream. Awesome. Uh, did I miss anything, Isaac? Awesome, yeah. Uh, just as Ruby uh, covered that and as, as Chetan also covered it, um, join our community to be a part of just sharing projects and um, checking each other's work out and really like giving feedback or supporting it. And I think the last thing that you, want, you wanted to mention, Ruby, was uh, about uh, what we're covering in our next stream. Yeah, um, so today we kind of did a quick glance at the Twitter API. We got to know the docs a little bit. We checked out some other projects that were linked into the documentation. But for our next stream, we really want to get in there and want to build something and see what else we can do, um, especially using the Twitter API through Postman, because uh, everything's very well documented in there. And we know that that's a great running start for us to get going on a project. Um, and I know I'm really excited about this trip challenge. So I want to get started right away. Uh, there's a huge $10,000 grand prize for winners. So that is something we can look forward to on the next stream. Get those API tokens, everybody. <laughs> After this introduction stream, I'm really looking forward to the next one. Awesome. Uh, APIs. For sure. All right. Well, with that said, thank you all for joining us. We'll see you on the next stream. Yeah, Thank you, guys. Take care, everyone. Bye.